Hey, a pleasure. Good day, everybody. This is Sportsline News. I'm Joe Burick, and I just did all the other series in the ECHL after I just did the Walleye series as they were able to pull out a win over the Cincinnati Cyclones. I will link that at the end, but if you want to go back on the channel, check out all the other ECHL first-round playoff recap of the series. Go check them out. This is going to be on the Wheel and Nailers and Fort Wayne Comets that back way back now on the 22nd as we're at, what, more May 4th. Excuse me if I could count the months. The Wheeling Nailers beat the Fort Wayne Comets, setting the tempo in a game that they played after taking the lead almost like the, uh, what Patrick Watling scored to give them the lead. They played almost like the Dallas Stars in the NHL where they let the goalie make the key saves when needed but keep the team to the outside and play some very good outside defensive hockey where yes the comments got on their shots they got some really good chances that uh, were, were, were stopped big time when it came to in cage by Louis Philippe Goydon um and he was able to come up Goydon and sorry I'm suck with some names so I admit, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing his name but LPG was able to come up big in cage with the wheeling nailers and then obviously it wasn't a bad game at all for one of the better young men in cage in samuel harvey it, it it's just his team couldn't score a damn goal so no bad game for a goaltender that was a goaltender duel a game that watling was able to win a good game for each goaltender fort wayne was just snake bitten offensively and then guess what the wheeling nailers for two straight games being the lesser team in the regular season don't tell them that they go up two to one after winning four to two. McPherson has a goal. Cockrell has a goal. Uh, Sean Joslin, Cam Hosinger, as we're going to get back to him very soon, as Wheeling Nailers fans know. Will Grabber, the MVP of the regular season, has a goal. And then Adam um, uh, Adam Brubaker was also able to score for Fort Wayne in that game. But this game, the Nailers just took control. They were able to be the opportunist land. Yes, they get allowed more shots for the second straight game to Fort Wayne. But I think from watching this series, that was kind of... Obviously, you don't want to allow more shots to the other team. But there's teams like the Dallas Stars that you kind of allow the shots. You let your goaltenders make the saves that need to be made and keep them to the outside as much as possible. Because you know the way that your team structured. You are going to allow a few shots. You just got to limit the high-octane shots to the other team. And I felt like they did a good job. And LPG, Louis Philippe Goydon made the big saves again and came up huge. Then here was the down game. Uh, the only game that they were really down and out. Not, not that they were. This was literally the only game they were really down and out. Was the 4-1 to one loss by the Nailers. And the great win that looked like it was getting, at this point, the Comets back into the series. Where Petruzzelli... Um, Corin, Cooper, and Russell were able to score for them, and only Cam Hosinger in this one was able to score for Wheeling. This one, they just let them get way too many shots. Like, obviously, in the first two, I said they got outshot by a landslide, but this one, it was 50-23, to 23, and Wheeling, unsimilar to the first two, didn't generate that many good opportunist high percentage chances with the limited shots they had like they did in the first two. So, it was a different structure game there. Then they lose by letting Fort Wayne score four goals again in back-to-back -back games, which is obviously something that the Wheeling Nailers know they have to adjust. They're not going to be Fort Wayne if they're letting them score over three goals per game. As Rochelle, Cooper, Grabber, the MVP, and Rochelle again were able to score. Cam Hosinger was able to score twice in the series, obviously probably the MVP of the series, I would say. So Amanascalo was able to score the other as they lost 4-3 to three in OT as one of the great OT battles of the Kelly Cup playoffs this far. There was, of course, a couple in that Utah Grizz series as well that's still ongoing. But now we go back, and it's a back-and-forth series as we have the Wheeling Nailers win. After that 4-3 win on the 29th by Fort Wayne, the Wheeling Nailers win 3-2 to two on the 30th as Maniscalco, Hude, and... Uh, Garcia uh, were able to score. Brubaker and Bodins were able to score for Fort Wayne. Then we come back, and there's another back and forth. They let them score four. So just as I said, let that team score over three. You ain't beating the Fort Wayne Comets ever. And this was in OT again, oddly enough. A score of four to three as uh, Bod 
as Bowden's was able to, Matthew Bowden's was able to win that for the Fort Wayne Comets as Cam Hosinger had all three goals for the Wheeling Nailers. So it was four uh, to three by the score of Cam Hosinger to the Fort Wayne Comets in that one. And then in the final game, another OT game. So just like, just like uh, one of the other series in the ECHL um, in this playoffs, uh, this this series went to a lot of OTs, which was cool to see. And I also said the Grizz series before. It was a Swamp Rabbit series that went to the cool OTs with the Everblades. It's cool to see games go to overtime, in my opinion, in the postseason because it, it makes it the most exciting. It makes it the most heart-wrenching, but it makes it the most exciting. So I think it was kind of cool to see the final game of this series also go to an overtime because th- th- that's just that's just the most fun. And you got to see a lot of them in the Greensville, Florida series. And we got to see a few here as well in the Wheeling Nailer series. And I'm never going to complain about overtimes. Also, I cover the Reading Royals and have the pleasure of being on there doing color commentating with Eric Jessberger. Uh, when I'm not a fan of the team, I really love the overtime games because I don't have my heart physically pumping at ridiculous levels like I know you guys do. But 3-2... Heck of a game. Sean Jostin was able to score. Matthew Garcia was able to score. Almeida was able to score. And they were able to, again, and they had also more shots, almost even in this game. It was 40-34, to 34, so I really liked how Will was able to get their, push the pace, not just get their shot count because the shots were just flat, but get their good chances and be able to have this game be the most shots, but also a very good generated chances after the first, the first day, the, the shots were even 8-8. They had a few good chances. Um, in the third, I thought Wheeling had a lot of good chances as well. So I think their chance count carried through, where in the first two games when they were able to win, they had a lot of the good chances early in the first, say, 25 change minutes of the game. And then they played very defensive, which obviously worked. But I liked how their chance count kind of carried through in this one, and they needed it because they needed to win an OT. And Garcia has the most exciting goal in, the, in hockey, winning a Game 7 in overtime. So good for him. This has been a recap of the Wheeling Nailers. It's nice to see them move on because obviously I'm a huge fan of Kenny Halsinger, fan of that entire family, being a fan of Kenny, Cam <clears throat> Halsinger. Uh, Kenny played great against him this year when the Royals played them, but uh, obviously Cam's been the MVP of the playoffs for the Wheeling Nailers thus far, and we'll have to see if that continues in the second round. But a hell of a first round by the Wheeling Nailers to technically upset the Fort Wayne Comets, even though on paper both teams are very, very good. Grabber, the MVP, is of course on Fort Wayne. So good upset. The MVP's knocked down in the first round. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below. Above these, use Richard to keep us growing to 250 or more by the beginning of June. Thanks, everybody, and stay safe.